Hello everyone, uh, welcome again to uh, Hybrid Financial Consultants. And today we're just going uh, to proceed with IFRS 15 uh, on step four when allocating the transaction price. How do we allocate the transaction price? As we said previously, uh, actually you're just going to have uh, to have to identify the contract at the first step, identify the contract, and after identifying the contract, you go to the second step uh, and identify the performance obligation. Performance obligations. The performance obligation, let's say you have one performance obligation and the second performance obligation just like this. And what you need to know right now is to identify the transaction price. Now, if you identify the price, you identify the price for both obligations, obligation one as well as obligation two. So what we need to do uh, is to allocate this transaction price into transaction to, to, to obligation one as well as to obligation two. And this uh, is our main concern right now. We just need to know how to how, actually how to distribute this transaction price to both performance obligations. So that's what we're just going to take a look at. So let's take the, take take a look at this and then we'll go to an example. So we say the transaction price should be allocated to each performance obligation in proportion to standalone selling prices. This is the main point. You just consider uh, the standalone selling prices. Let's say you have two performance obligations, one and two. And then uh, let's say uh, to satisfy the performance obligation one, uh, you actually would expect to receive $100,000 and performance obligation two, uh, $200,000, that's give you a total of $300,000. And so actually uh, you, you can use such basis uh, to actually to allocate the transaction price because usually the transaction total transaction price would be less than the total values uh, of individual of standalone selling prices due to a discount because a band of goods will be provided or the band of goods or sales will be provided and actually uh, actually there, there, there could be a discount. So we are just going to take a look at this uh, in, in a very fine example. So the best point here is just to the standalone selling prices. We are told here the best evidence of a standalone selling price is how do you obtain this? In most questions, you will be given the standalone selling prices. But actually, uh, the standalone selling prices is just the observable price when the good or service is sold separately. That's what we call the actually uh, the standalone selling price. You ask yourself, oh, I need to provide a uh, service to someone, uh, or maybe I need to sell a computer, but also I need uh, actually uh, to provide maintenance services, maybe for two, three years, uh, something like that. Now we say selling a computer is one performance obligation, and actually providing maintenance services is the second performance obligation. So uh, you just have to ask yourself, what would have been the price had I supplied only uh, the computer, or had I, had, was I to render only maintenance services? So that the standalone selling price is that the best way to compute them. But sometimes it will be difficult to obtain them. So what do you do? So we say, in case the standalone selling price is not directly observable, what should we do? In case there is no that standalone selling prices, what are you gonna, going to do? Then we say it must be estimated, but the use of observable inputs should be maximized. So you have to estimate it. Oh, I need, uh, I, I'm just going to provide a computer to someone, all right. But actually I do not know the separate price of the computer. I just know uh, the price that would be charged if I sell the computer together with the provision of maintenance services. Now, how would I know the price of that computer if, if it cannot be identified readily? You have to use inputs as nice as possible to reach your solution. So that's why you say, if a customer is offered a discount for purchasing a band of goods and services, then the discount should be allocated across all performance obligations. Of course, let's say that uh, you need uh, to provide uh, to sell a computer and provide maintenance services for a total, let's say for a total $400. Let's presume that the, that the situation but actually the transaction price is just $350,000, $350. What should, it, what should that mean? It really means that because a band of goods and services is being provided, there is a discount of 50. So unless told otherwise, that discount should be allocated to both performance obligation. I'm repeating again, unless otherwise stated. So that's what you're saying. If there is a discount, actually uh, you would have to allocate 
it across all performance obligations, not just one within the contract in proportion to their standalone selling prices. Unless, that's why I say, unless observable evidence suggests that this would be inaccurate. So actually, we take a look at the question and understand that. All right, let's just go directly to the question and find out how to proceed. So let's go to question here. Question number nine, question number nine, right? Something like that, something like that, number nine is, yes, here. Now let's take a look at an example of how to allocate the transaction price. Don't worry, we just take, come and take a look at the single question that explains all the steps, all right? So here the, here the question, it says, Natchard sells an equipment and one year's free technical support for $120,000. So this is the provision. This is what the customer requires and what the customer will be provided with an equipment as well as a free technical support. Now you have not one thing. If you are told of free technical support, we believe that's not true. The customer, the, actually the supplier is just trying to attract the customers. Nudge side is just trying to attract the customers, telling them uh, that you offer them a uh, free technical support, but that's not right. You have to allocate the transaction price to both the equipment and the free technical support. Do not presume presume actually the price to technical support to be zero just because you have, you have been told free technical service. That uh, should not concern you. So the question proceeds, the sale of the machine and the provision of technical service have been identified as separate performance obligations. So it's clearly stated that they are separate performance obligations. Of course, even if are uh, not told, you would have to consider them uh, a separate performance obligation unless it is impracticable, unless you do not have sufficient information actually to separate them. So, Nudge said usually sell the equipment for $100,000. Now, you see, the equipment is usually sold for $100,000, but it has not yet started selling technical support for this equipment as a standalone product. Now, as you see here, we have a uh, the standalone selling price for one performance obligation that is the selling of the equipment. But actually, we are yet to determine the standalone selling price for technical support. So how would we arrive at this? You have to, we said you have to use observable inputs uh, so as to reach the solution. So we are given further information that other support services offered by NatSAD attract a markup of 40%. These are other services. I hope you understand the meaning of markup. Markup is just a percentage of profit on cost. So we are told the technical support is expected to cost $25,000. So for Nudstart to be able to provide uh, that technical support, actually he would incur $25,000. And since uh, there is usually a markup of 40%, you can now identify the standalone selling price. You just take 40% of this 25,000, getting 10,000, and then you add uh, to this cost that is 25,000, and you arrive at the standalone selling price by estimation. So that's what we're just going to do. Now required, allocate the transaction price to the equipment and technical support. Now we just need to know, according to the contract that you have just entered into, what transaction price actually should be uh, considered for equipment and what transaction price should be considered for technical support. That's our concern right now. So let's proceed here. Here we are. The selling price of the equipment is under 1,000 based on the observable evidence. So this, this is the standalone selling price now. Technical support has no observable selling price. And so the standalone selling price has to be estimated. As I just told you, you need to estimate this. How are we going to estimate this? All right, in case there was, there was no information, I'm just trying to extend something here. In case you had no information on the margin, this is what you would have done. We say that a residual approach would attribute 5,000 which is 100,000 total transaction price minus 95 to the technical support, but it does not approximate the standalone selling prices of the similar services which normally make a profit. So simply speaking, just ignore this. Just ignore this, what we've just done here, because you do not have any information 
And also, actually, you should just ignore this 95. Just ignore it because uh, for our case here, there is no need to make use of this 95 here. So we can just ignore it. This is what we would have done. A better approach for estimating the selling price of the support would be the cost plus a margin or markup, but we are given the markup. Thus, the selling price of the service would be 35,000. That means 25,000 plus 40% 20 of 25,000, or simply speaking, uh, 25,000 times 140 percent. So actually, we would end up arriving at this figure here, just like this, and everything would be fine. So this is just what we're just going to use, right? Do not think of anything else. Just ignore this. Just ignore this one. Oh, yes. Just ignore, ignore this, ignore this one at the top, ignore it. So let's proceed. After here, now actually we know we have both of the standalone selling prices. We have 100,000 for equipment and we have 35,000, which is for technical service. If you add them together, you arrive at the total of 135,000, just like this. So, Regardless of the total consideration, remember that the total consideration was only 120,000. Now you get a picture. Selling, okay, selling out the products and services separately would give you 135,000, but the total contract only gives you uh, 120,000, reflecting a discount. It really means that there is a discount here. So, what discount will be there? You just take $135,000 minus $120,000 and end up with a discount of $15,000. So this will be the discount. Now, to know actually the percentage of the discount that has been given, uh, you just take 15,000 divided by 135,000 and you would arrive uh, at the discount that is given. So 15,000 over 135,000, uh, you would arrive at 11.11% and this would be the discount. So this will be the discount uh, for both, so this should be the discount for both uh, provision of equipment as well as such technical service. And you know, if you give someone the discount, that means it won't be included in the revenue. So this won't be included in the revenue. So actually we are still going, uh, we just need to know the transaction price to allocate. So we say, IFRS 15 takes it that discounts relate to all performance obligations within a contract unless evidence exists to the contrary. So we presume this 11.11% with the discount to both of the performance obligations. And now let's go to allocate uh, this transaction price. So what, are, what was our transaction price given? What, did, what transaction price were we given? Uh, if we start with the actually uh, with the machine, actually with the equipment, if we start with the equipment, uh, it, it was having a hundred thousand dollars. And so we are told that there is a discount of 11.111. So a hundred percent minus 11.111, actually we get 88.889, just like this. And if you should multiply them, you end up with this figure here. So this should be the transaction price allocated to the machine or to the equipment. And then the transaction price allocated to the technical support, you just have to take that figure that is 35,000, that was the standalone selling price. And then to multiply by 88.889, just like this, and everything, uh, would, and everything would be fine uh, if you just did it this way. So uh, you end up with at 1.111. Actually, this is the best method when uh, approaching such questions, but actually you could have done something in a very simple way, although I'd not re recommend it. Actually, I recommend that one. You could have done this. Let me show you here. You could have done, uh, wait, wait, wait. This, is, this is, a, is an alternative that you could have used. We had 100,000 for equipment and 35,000 for what? 35,000 for technical service. So this is what we would have done. So here we have equipment, 
costing a hundred thousand and then we have technical service technical service are costing the five thousand so uh giving you a total giving a total of 135 135 just like this so this is the total figure that you would have here right so since this is the total figure you just have to apportion it just apportion it and then multiply by the actual transaction price that was stated in the contract so if you start transaction price for equipment how we get this well we'll just do this you just take the equipment cost a hundred thousand so just write a hundred thousand here over total 135 thousand and then multiply by 120 thousand just like this i hope uh if you do this you would arrive at the same results you can just try it for yourself and then we have the transaction price uh for technical service is what you will take here 35 thousand divided by 135 thousand then multiply by 120 thousand would also arrive at the figure you could have just done it this way and all would be well but remember that if you do this we we'll presume that the discounts apply to both of the products so you should know this very very well all right thank you very much and uh until next time